In Mexico, people drink Coke made with cane sugar from heavy glass bottles. In America, the same brand uses high fructose corn syrup in plastic and aluminum. Same red label, same secret formula, completely different cult followings. But here's what fans on both sides refuse to accept. Is Mexican Coke actually better? Or have millions of people been fooled by nostalgia in a glass bottle? Until 1980, all Coca-Cola in America used cane sugar. Then, corn syrup took over. High fructose corn syrup costs less than sugar because American farms grow mountains of corn, subsidized by government programs that make it artificially cheap. Sugar imports face tariffs that push prices higher. So Coca-Cola did what any business would do. They switched sweeteners and saved millions. Mexico kept using cane sugar because their economics work differently. Sugar cane grows abundantly in tropical climates. No tariffs inflate the price. The decision wasn't about taste. It was about money. By 1984, every American Coke bottle contained corn syrup. Mexican bottles kept their original recipe. Two versions of the same drink emerged, separated by a border and a balance sheet. When it hits your tongue. Cane sugar is sucrose, a molecule your body splits into glucose and fructose during digestion. High fructose corn syrup skips that step. It arrives pre-split, already containing free glucose and fructose in similar ratios. Chemically, your body processes both sweeteners almost identically. They contain the same calories. They affect blood sugar similarly. The fructose to glucose ratio in HFCS55, the type used in sodas, measures roughly 55% fructose. Cane sugar splits into 50% each. That 5% difference is nearly imperceptible on your tongue. Both dissolve into carbonated water the same way. Both create that familiar sweetness, coating your teeth after a cold sip. The molecules don't care which country produced them. The switch from sugar to corn syrup wasn't a flavor decision. It was agricultural policy. American corn subsidies date back to the 1970s, designed to stabilize farm income and keep food prices low. These programs made corn derivatives incredibly cheap. Meanwhile, sugar quotas limited imports, protecting domestic beet and cane farmers but raising sugar prices. Coca-Cola faced a choice between expensive domestic sugar, even pricier imported sugar, or cheap corn syrup that tasted close enough. They chose profits. Today, HFCS costs roughly 35 cents per pound. Cane sugar costs 50 to 60 cents. That 25% difference multiplied across billions of bottles means massive savings. You're not tasting a flavor choice. You're tasting economic policy in every sip. And here's where it gets strange. When researchers remove the bottles and pour both Cokes into identical cups, something unexpected happens. People can't reliably tell them apart. In blind taste tests conducted by multiple organizations, participants performed barely better than random chance. One study found American Coke preferred 2 to 1 over Mexican Coke. Another showed 50% accuracy, basically a coin flip. Tasters who swore they could detect the difference failed when labels disappeared. Some described Mexican Coke as sweeter. Others said American Coke tasted sweeter. The same person would identify samples differently on repeated attempts. Their tongues detected something, but their brains couldn't decode which was which. But that's only half the story. Mexican Coke comes in thick glass bottles with crimped metal caps. American Coke typically comes in aluminum cans or thin plastic bottles. Glass is chemically inert. It doesn't react with acidic liquids or absorb flavors over time. Aluminum and plastic can subtly interact with carbonated beverages. 
potentially altering taste in ways too faint to consciously notice, but strong enough to register as different. The glass bottle also stays colder, longer against your palm. The weight feels substantial, premium. That satisfying pop when you pry off the cap activates memory. Suddenly, you're drinking soda like your grandparents did. The experience transforms before liquid touches your lips. Is the difference the sugar? Or is it everything surrounding the sugar? Mexican Coke costs nearly three times more than American Coke per ounce. People pay this premium gladly. They photograph the bottles. They save them as decorations. They insist the taste is incomparably better despite failing blind tests. This isn't irrationality. It's psychology working exactly as designed. When you believe something tastes better, it does. Brain imaging studies show that expectation literally changes how we perceive flavor. Knowing you're drinking the authentic Mexican version activates reward centers before sweetness even registers. The glass bottle triggers childhood memories of summer, of family gatherings, of simpler times. You're not just buying soda, you're buying a feeling, and feelings are worth the extra dollar. Here's what nobody on either side wants to admit. Both Cokes contain 39 grams of sugar per bottle. Both will affect your health identically in excess. The molecules are functionally the same. The calories are identical. Mexican Coke actually contains more sodium, 85 milligrams versus 40 in the American version. The difference exists not in chemistry, but in lived experience. Mexican Coke offers ritual, nostalgia, and the satisfaction of choosing something perceived as more authentic. American Coke offers convenience, familiarity, and the taste you grew up expecting every time. Neither is objectively superior. Both are precisely what their manufacturers intended. So, which Coke is actually better? You already know the answer. It's whichever one you're holding when the moment feels right. The cold glass against summer heat. The familiar can at a baseball game. The bottle your grandmother handed you as a child. You're not choosing between sugar and corn syrup. You're not choosing between countries or formulas. You're choosing between two different ways of experiencing the exact same memory, bottled and sold back to you at different price points.